Good morning and hello. Welcome to the Edwardsville Business Forecast Breakfast 2023. My name is... Oh. Oh. <clears throat> My name is James Arnold, and unfortunately for you, you are stuck with me again as the moderator for this fine event. I am the Economic and Community Developer for the City of Edwardsville, as well as earning the title of Grants Coordinator in 2022. Two years in, adding more titles, I think for my third year, I'll try to become a parks laborer as well. <laughs> I think I can make that work. I like humor. I try to share my humor with everyone, but sometimes all I have is bad dad jokes. One major difference from last year to this year is I had to increase the font size in order to read this. <clears throat> my 2022 ended quite interestingly. My wife looked at me and said, she could have said many things, but she looked at me and said, I see you have some dry skin. You need some lotion and moisturizer. So I took a trip to the store, and you would not believe the look on my eyes when I went to buy that tub of Cetaphil. $21 for a tub of lotion. So I decided to buy the off-brand product, and I can tell you that it was definitely cheaper but I also definitely have dry skin still. Let us be real here though. I could bring up any produce or product. It's all the same. Dare I bring up the word egg, which may be one of the most hated words in our language right now. I think many people over 2022 began suffering sticker shock and began purchasing different products as a result. What an interesting time in our lives. I never fathomed the moment where the major news stations could take an event and report on a story 12 different ways with 12 different facts. Today we are discussing the financial outlook for 2023. Now I don't want to say that too loud because your phones will hear that and then your algorithms will change and you'll get 24 different stories and opinions, not necessarily facts, about the financial state of the USA. In 2022, we were hammered with a 4 to 7 percent interest rate. We were shaken by this. I would like to consider two things. One, the interest rate at 2 to 3% was artificially low for too long. I think we can probably agree on that. This rate was established to stimulate the economy post-recession, and I think we have to be honest and say that for Edwardsville, it did. Second, the way the interest rate rose, and at the speed it rose, scared and shocked many of us. I spoke with a high-profile developer two weeks ago who led key developments in Olivet, Missouri. I will paraphrase what he had to say. The rates were never meant to stay at 2 to 3 percent. Yes, it was great, but look at the history over the last 50 years and you can see that 4 to 7 percent is about where we should be. I remember when my dad had to invest at 22 percent. With this in mind, I say we should all step back and take a collective breath. I was once at a meeting with a motivational speaker. Her name is Tracy Bianco. And her message was very clear that day. She discussed what we get to do versus what we have to do. Essentially, she taught me to change the narrative by changing one word and the transformative impact that has on something as small as a sentence. I love jokes. And to be honest, I did not understand the magnitude of what the speaker was trying to tell me. So I cracked a joke about having to change a stinky diaper. She stopped me and said, James, you get to change that diaper. Think about the alternative. Wow. I thought about that, and though my story is a little silly, it, is quite, it was quite impactful to me. You do not have to do things. You get to do things. Think of that alternative. I am a diaper-changing warrior now because I get to be. <laughs> Take that message into every day. We get to go to work, and we get to lend at 4 to 7 percent, and the message completely changes. Another key piece of this message is control what you can control. You become so much lighter when you let go of certain things that you do not control. I know this is easier said than done, but on the other side, let me know when you get a hold of Janet Yellen. That was kind of funny. 
As stated, today we will discuss 2022, things coming in 2023, and the financial outlook for 2023. As you will soon see, Edwardsville had a strong 2022 in terms of investment. It is now my pleasure to invite the Honorable Mayor Rizvi to the lectern for his presentation and message. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to our business forecast breakfast today. We have a mix of business owners, educators, residents, elected officials, students, and business professionals here today. Thank you to GC Cuisine for this beautiful venue and great breakfast. We have bacon this year, and I know we missed that last year, so we're happy about that. And I'd like to thank the EHS Orchestra's Chamber Ensemble for the lovely music. It was really nice to have them up here. I'm very thankful for the city, city's dedicated employees. I would invite city employees and elected officials to stand and be recognized. Most importantly, I would like to thank everyone here for attending the event today. So let's get started. I'd like to start by speaking briefly about our numbers, and we're going to start with our equalized assess valuation history. Our estimate EAV is $932 million. Our EAV has steadily increased due to the warehouses in the enterprise zone and new commercial developments. As a result, our EAV growth, the city's property tax rate has remained flat. We are estimating our tax rate to be 1.4119%, which is a 0% increase from the 2021 final tax rate. Dollar values of construction. We had $170 million of investment in 2022, which is the second largest total in the last 20 years. I have to step back and think about that a moment with everything we've been through the last couple of years, $170 million. That's very impressive. We're very grateful. 106, 106 residential units were created during this time with a bulk of the investment in the commercial sector. The bulk of residential developments came from multifamily units, of which 77 came from Trace's third residential building. On Villa Court in Essex, two duplexes contributed to four units, while 25 single-family permits were pulled at various developments around town. Our 2022 monthly permits. Of the $170 million of investment, 10.8 million was single family homes, 130.5 million was commercial investment, 16.4 million was multifamily development, and 12.1 million was additions and remodels. Yearly permit totals. In 2022, we issued 984 permits. Though less than 2021's permits totals, the dollar amount of investment in 2022 was far greater. The 2022 monthly permit totals. We've had 25 single family permits, 234 com commercial permits, three multifamily permits, and 722 remodels. A year in review. Today, we're going to look at new businesses and residential units in 2022. We're going to talk about our bicycle and pedestrian master plan. We'll speak briefly about our Excellence in Edwardsville Award, our Spotlight Edwardsville segments, our Route 66 mural, and our Route 66 monument. At last year's business forecast breakfast, I highlighted Recess Brewing for hosting their grand reopening in January of 2022. I did not want to fail to mention the impact it has had on North Main Street. We're very grateful. Essential venue open in February as a micro event space that allows you to create a custom atmosphere for your event, hosting 60 guests for a seated dinner or up to 80 guests for a standing cocktail reception. Chappies open in March and features fried chicken, burgers, and homemade milkshakes with a car theme. The car theme extends the watershed in the form of a scavenger hunt with Hot Wheels hidden throughout the trail for all the kids in the community. 
They really enjoy it. Neighbors Bake Shop. Ebersville Neighbors opened Neighbors Bake Shop, a nonprofit bakery and community kitchen, on March 1st, 2022, located at Whispering Heights. Oaxaca opened on the parkway and continue to, continues to be very busy and has more exciting news to come this year. Last year, we experienced a relocation of Peel Wood Fire Pizza. In 2022, eight premier lux luxurious condominiums were completed and are currently on the market in case anybody needs a place. The Loading Bar opened on April 22nd, 2022 and offers many classic arcade game options such as Ms. Pac-Man, Asteroids, and Mortal Kombat. 1818 Offshore opened in April of 2022 and is locally owned and operated by John Pache, Megan Pache, and Adam Washburn. The family business newly opened in April 22 at the original 1818 Chop House at Park Plaza location. It steps away from the city park and historic Main Street. There are many attractions bringing residents and visitors downtown to our dining scene and we're very grateful for that. Sneaky's Burger Truck opened in April of 2022, serving customers 100% Wagyu beef burgers and plant-based Impossible Burger patties. Blue Violet, located on the Parkway, opened in May of 2022 and is the first non-Italian restaurant from Michael DePetro and the MDP Restaurant Group. Buff City uh, Soaps is a rapidly growing retail franchise known for its handmade plant-based soaps and body products made in-store daily. They opened in May. The RP Lumber Center. Last year, we opened the RP Lumber Center, which is an ice hockey rink and community facility through the generosity of numerous donors. Our Shine on Ice program debuts this April with a focus on teaching those with disability ages 17 and younger the techniques needed to ice skate. This was a collaboration with the Ebersville Community Foundation and a grant from the Dana Brown Charitable Trust. Collins Farms, op opened by Sophie and Annie Generis, located at 219 Hillsboro Avenue, open in June, and features gourmet salads, euros, smoothies, and cookies. Pokemunch, located in the RLP Commercial Park West, opened in June of 2022. Ozzy Kamazi and his brother Mustafa Kamazi are co-owners, along with Justin Garcia, who is the head chef. This menu is built around pokey, which is cubed raw fish, seasoned any way you like. In addition to the classic ahi tuna bowls, the variety spice levels and other items include the chicken katsu bowl and a vegan sweet chili tofu bowl. In July, Ray Marcel Photography opened at 301 North Main Street and focuses on newborn, maternity, cake smash, family and milestones photography. Flanagan Paint and Supply, a Benjamin Moore retailer owned by Jay Donnelly, opened in June, July, I'm sorry, July of 2022 in the Montclair Shopping Center on Troy Road. The company dates back to 1950 and has multiple locations in the St. Louis area. Pizza Hut opened July of 22 at their new location on Troy Road. Performance Cairo Plus opened on August 29th at its new location on South Kansas. They use modern chiropractic care and movement therapy with individualized treatment for people of all ages. Chase Bank, located at Edwardsville Crossing, opened in August. Carrollton Bank, moved on to the first floor of the Madison Mutual Building in the summer of 22 with a very impressive development and plans to expand a drive through down the road this year. Another tenant on the parkway is Morgan Stanley, which opened on October 31st. Edwardsville Bank will be moving into the first floor of the Morgan Stanley Building this summer. Hawaiian Brothers opened in November and inspired every day to spread the aloha spirit, to show kindness and respect and treat everyone as ohana, like family and everything they do. Some favorites include huli huli chicken, malakai chicken, and Honolulu chicken with a signature teriyaki sauce 
macaroni salad, seasoned vegetables, sweet and savor, savory musabi, and tasty grinds inspired by the authentic island favorites. In November of 2022, 1933 House of Bourbon opened in Whispering Heights with more than 120 bourbons and a number of food options with the nod of the year prohibition ended. Jade opened in November and offers resources to promote mindful living, including healing stones, aromatherapy, and skincare collections. Shops on Main, a small business market, marketplace incubator operated by Nicole Ehlers and Jan Wallace, opened in, in fall of 2022, expanding offerings to other local businesses and artisans. Creations by Kiki and KWL Science are the flagship anchors for nearly 20 other local vendors and artisans. Nauticables open in Ironworks Development on December 3rd, featuring healthy, fresh acai superfood bowls. Anderson Hospital. This is the third building at the Anderson Goshen campus with a major investment in our community. The facility offers the convenience of both physician services and diagnostic services in one location. As construction wraps up on the third residential building at Trace, the building will have 77 additional residential units. Residents have a plethora of amenities as well as access to the restaurants, goods and services with immediate access to the very important MCT trails on the parkway. Anheuser-Busch. This is our newest distribution warehouse, AB InBev, located in the Gateway Commerce Center. This has a 210,000 square footprint. And welcome SM Wilson and Royal Banks, located behind former mayor Hal Patton's dental practice on First Avenue, open in 20 of 22. Our fire station east. The groundbreaking took place on November 29th, Construction is anticipated completion in 2024, which coincides with our fire department's 150th anniversary. Next, we're gonna talk about SIUE, SIUE and the city collaboration. One exciting thing that transpired as 2022 came to an end is the collaboration of the city with Chancellor Minor of SIUE. The focus is on increasing website presence, collaborative planning, developing a system for information sharing, and improving visibility. Next, we have four new homes that have been constructed, constructed in the original Dunlop Lake subdivision on Marine Road and Park Drive by Fund Construction. City Walk by Fund Construction is located on the southeast quadrant of the intersection of East Schwartz Street and South Kansas Street and will consist of eight residential homes with walkability to downtown. The Ice House, formerly Alvarita's College of Cosmetology, was transformed into a 10-unit residential building by Fund Construction and is managed and owned by Tarek Samare. In January, a new franchisees, Ashley and Johnny Randolph, opened Pretzel Pretzel, which features soft pretzels, nuggets, and stuffed pretzels, along with party trays, and they've been extremely busy. Next, we're gonna talk about the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee and how hard they've been at work. Edwardsville received a bicycle-friendly community designation at the bronze level from the League of American Bicyclists. As of fall 2022, 501 communities are currently recognized by the League as a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum level. The League of American Bicy Bicyclists Bicycle Friendly Program sets the standard for how communities build and benchmark progress towards making biking better and recognizes the commitment to improving conditions for all people who bike. This award recognizes our continuous efforts to improve our community and make it a place where people desire to live and work. Edwardsville City Council adopted their Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan in August. The planning process involved input through various open house meetings and surveys from residents and business owners within our community. This plan focuses mainly 
on creating connections to the existing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure for the goal to mode shift the community to choose bicycle or walking for not only recreational purposes, but for other purposes such as commuting. The plan identifies 15 corridors as priorities for the city to focus for future improvements and provides recommended facility types for each corridor. Our existing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure draws many people to our community and businesses and our continued efforts to improve bike and pedestrian infrastructure will help both our residents and business, order, business owners succeed. Next, let's discuss excellence in Edwardsville. This award encourage, encourages public service through selflessness and recognizes residents whose generous efforts, contributions, and achievements foster and enhance civic pride and responsibility, promote appreciation, and embody the spirit of our city. If you would like to nominate someone, then visit our website to fill out a form. You can see the list of 2022 and 2023 recipients thus far. Spotlight Edwardsville. This segment highlights local small, small businesses and their owners in Edwardsville that make our city unique. And many of you are here today. These films are shared on social media in an effort to increase foot traffic to our town. These nominations come from individuals from our community. Please visit our website to nominate a business. You can see the list of those nominated uh, for our spotlight segments above thus far including today, our latest re recipient was GC Cuisine and Crystal Garden Banquet Center and Event Center. Next, we're gonna talk about the Route 66 mural. The Route 66 mural on a fun building at the southeast corner of East Vandalia and South Main Streets is one of 12 murals highlighting Route 66 in Southern Illinois, celebrating the 100th anniversary, which will take place in 2026. This could not have been made possible Without, without the assistance of Great Rivers and Routes, Tourism Bureau, and Corey Job. Thank you. As another facet of the Route 66 celebration, we have a 12.5 foot tall Route 66 monument that was installed across from Lincoln Middle School at the end of January. This monument has Instagram written all over it. Please stop by, take a photo, hashtag Edwardsville 66, please. In 2022, Alderman requested and approved a budget for a green space in initiative, which allowed the city to purchase land for green space and conservation. Our property that has been purchased is located at the northwest corner of Grand and Terry, near the watershed, while a second property is located off of Florida Street, Florida Street is near the shale pit. Both properties are pictured here. Aldermen are working hard to create a comprehensive list for future conservation sites. Now, we're going to take a brief look into 2023. We'll talk about new businesses and residential units to come, the West End Service Station, the Station on Main, Park North, Wheels and Walk Festival, our Street Banner Contest, District 7 Goals and Priorities, awarded grants, construction projects, and our Q and Brew. Let's start with Epic Brews, the city's newest sports bar opened on March 4th and is located in Whispering Heights, has a full service bar and kitchen with multiple televisions to cover the many sporting events. Cafe Birdie is scheduled to open tomorrow Jenny Levi will focus on high quality, nourishing ingredients and bring fresh updates to Heartland cooking. Firehouse Subs, located in the end cap by Schnooks, has a mission to carry on their commitment to and passion for hearty and flavorful food, heartfelt service, and public safety is anticipated to open March 13th. Brick and Bramble is projected to be open by the end of March. This is a reimagined space where Sugar Fire was formerly located in Ironworks and shares a patio with Global Brew Tap House. Bank of Madison County is renovating at 119 South Main Street for a move scheduled in April of 2023. We have Played Again Sports, located at Four Club Center Court, Suite A, is a neighborhood sporting goods store offering new and quality used sporting and fitness equipment. 
Phase one of their opening started on February 6, with the store open to buy used sporting goods in the community. Phase two, the grand opening, will take place later this month with the store to open and buy and sell equipment. Clementine's Creamery serves unique, small-batched ice cream, incredible flavors, including alcoholic and vegan options, will be another great option on the parkway this year. SIUE's Health Science Building Project, located in the northeast corner of South University and University Research Drive, the building will be the home of the School of Nursing and Pharmacy, but will also be available for teaching students enrolled in health and human behavior courses. In 2022, the Gateway Enterprise Zone officially expanded to provide incentives to developers for commercial areas in one of the oldest parts of our city. Hawthorne Hills, phase three, will have nine lots for development by Lance and Jones. The station on Main, a multi-level property, will include 38 single bedroom apartments and townhomes, four restaurants, office space for up to five businesses, and five boutique retail sites. I am incredibly excited to see this kind of commitment, committed investment on Main Street. Thank you to the Baileys and Fireside Financial for their commitment to Edwardsville. Next, the jewel of the Midwest. It's time to get excited. EXO 2.0 continues to raise the bar and is projected to rebuild at the EXO's former location with an ambient and elegant lounge nail bar and med spa a true destination. Look at this stunning and beautiful design befitting for the unique and enchanting experience that EXO offers. Drunken Fish, a local Japanese chain serving rolls, noodles, and entrees, along with cocktails in a chic modern setting, and kimchi guys, a casual eatery known for their Korean fried chicken, are expected to open this year on the parkway. Eskimo Hut Frozen Daiquiris, specializing in signature frozen daiquiris and margaritas, and Nothing Bunt Cake with their handcrafted bunt cakes in a variety of fl flavors and sizes, bring even more choices to our food and drink scene. The Ink House Expansion. This expansion is a unique boutique hotel located on 2nd Street, just off of Main Street. The first floor features a large dining area for up to 60 people a seven-seat bar, restrooms, a cooler, interior and exterior storage, and a rear covered patio. Upstairs, there will be eight suites, a covered deck in the rear, two bridal suites are planned, two suites with king-size bed, one with a queen-size bed, and two suites with pairs of queens. Every suite has its own interior bathroom. Three of the suites are ADA accessible, something very unique for our community. Next. We have a fun restaurant concept, which will be located at 224 South Kansas Street. More exciting news to come. And we have the West End Service Station, which is a Route 66 interpretive center. It's an integral piece of a $460,000 grant received for the, from the state of Illinois for redevelopment of a site al along Route 66 that was once operated as a gas station. With this remodel, the site will afford Edwardsville the opportunity to share stories of Route 66 and be a destination spot. We had many grants that we were awarded this year. Main Street and Downtown Revitalization Grant Program, which was $2.9 million. Shine on Ice, which was a $15,000 grant. The Illinois Office of Tourism, which was $460,000. The Agency for Community Transit Grant, which was 100,000. The Metro East Park and Recreation District Trail Grant at 240,000. And the very important Cass Avenue Water Main Replacement, which was 500,000. Construction projects to come. Phase three of Route 66 Trail. North Buchanan Street Resurfacing Project. St. Louis Street Resurfacing Project. And University Drive Phase one Reconstruction. Next is Q and Brew, was a new event in 2022 and received the new event or festival award this year 
from the Great Rivers and Routes Tourism Bureau at their 2023 annual summit. We are thrilled that Q and Brew will be back for round two on October 14th and 15th this year. Next, the Winlands generously donated $50,000 to the Edwardsville Children's Museum for the Winland Education Center at the Nickel Plate Station. This unique space helps address one of the muse museum's biggest limitations, space. The museum will be using the Winland Education Center to display seasonal exhibits like Into the Arctic and All Aboard. Exhibits like these will rotate through the center so visitors can experience something new each season at the Edwardsville Children's Museum. Now, Park North. Park North is another impressive development coming to Edwardsville. It will feature a top golf like concept that includes restaurants and miniature golf. Another key piece of this project includes the extension of Sports Park Drive from Plummer Family Park to 143, which will provide direct access to Plummer Family Park from I-55. This is a Plocker and Byron collaboration. Wheels and Walk Festival. The Campus to Community Committee is hosting the Wheels and Walk Festival for the second year on April 15th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is the second year we've had this event. It will have two starting locations this year, one at the SAUE campus and the Lewis and Clark Community College Nelson Complex, and will once again end at Ironworks, home to Global Tap House, Global Brew Tap House, Chicken Salad Chick, Waxing the City, Nautica Bowls, and the new Brick and Bramble. Hike and Bike. The first Bike and Hike event will be sponsored by the city's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee on May 20th during the Goshen Market. The goal of this event is to incentivize and encourage bike ridership to the weekly Goshen Market on Saturday mornings in downtown Edwardsville and other destinations in our community. Next, we have the Street Banner Contest. The Campus to Community Committee is partnering with the Edwardsville Arts Center once again for the third annual Street Banner Contest. The theme this year is local inspiration and submissions are due by July 1st. 16 winning banners will be displayed in the city on South Buchanan and West Vandalia and feature artwork from kindergartners to adult. Next, we're going to talk about District 7's projects ranked by priority. These projects are ranked by priority on the above slide. District 7's forward-thinking, ambitious, and necessary plans to reinvest in facilities sets the bar high in Southern Illinois education and continues to ensure family-friendly community provides for our children's academic future. Also coming in 2023, High Point Burger, Zena Boutique, Granite City Steel Credit Union, Rain, Spicy Affair, Cloud Nine, Regal, Christian Brothers Automotive, and so much more. That concludes the year in review and upcoming projects in 2023. I would like now to welcome James Arnold, our Economic and Community Development and Grants Coordinator, back up to the lectern. Thank you. Thank you for your words, Mayor Rizvi. In terms of development, it sounds as if we should be very excited for 2023. Now remember those numbers and rates that I shared earlier? Get ready to throw them out the window with facts from our keynote speaker. In reality, I did research and the national interest rate over the last 50 years was near 5.5%. But we know there is so much more to look at than just that number. Mr. Chad Opel is our keynote speaker today and is an expert at looking at all things numbers and markets. I looked at his presentation before this and it is packed with insightful information. As you can see, Chad is an accomplished young professional with many accolades from being a high school state champion to the Baltimore Orioles to having a wonderful family, an arm in philanthropy and being a leader in business. Today, Chad will discuss such things as interest rates, CPI, community development, inflation, and charitable contributions. Please help me in welcoming Chad Opel to the lectern. Excellent. Excellent. 
I'm not a podium guy here. I'm a move around the move around the room guy. Thank you, James. Thanks for everybody for being here, uh, especially taking time out of your busy morning. It was uh, it was interesting. James reached out to me about six six eight weeks ago and said, "Hey, Chad, we'd love to have you, you know, be one of the speakers for our breakfast coming up." And he's talking about all the things that I'd like for me to discuss, and I'm getting excited and, and nervous at the same time. I immediately call my wife, and I'm like, "Mom," I'm like, I call her mom, Kathy. <laughs> She's mom in our house. I'm like, I'm like, Kathy, you never believe it. The city just called, asked me to be a speaker. I'm all excited, and now she's the loving, supportive wife that she is. She knows I'm terrified of public speaking, so she immediately stops me and goes, well, you, you did say yes, right? And I said, well, I told James to give me one day. I'm online. I'm looking at Expedia. I'm trying to find a last-minute deal for March 2nd or March 7th on a Tuesday, but unfortunately, I couldn't find anything, so here I am. You guys are stuck with me. Um, so here we go. This, uh, for, I know most of you in this room, which is awesome, but for those who don't know me, this is my family, my beautiful wife, Kathy, my two little girls, the loves of my life, and I'm an Edwardsville boy. I'm born and raised here. This has been my home for 43 years. Uh, I graduated from the new high school, which I don't know why I call it the new high school. It's 25 years old, but uh, SJ probably does the same thing because we were the first graduating class from the new high school. Um, but what's cool is my parents graduated from Edwardsville. My grandparents graduated from Edwardsville. My great-grandparents graduated from Edwardsville. And uh, those cuties right there will graduate from Edwardsville in the next decade. But anyway, super excited to be here. Um, I've been doing financial planning for 18 years. I love the, love the business. This is my team here, Evan and Barb. And of course, all our clients' favorite employee. This is Ariel Rapunzel Opal. And I'll give you one guess uh, who named that dog. <laughs> but uh, so a little bit for the agenda today. Like James said, like to hit on inflation, interest rates, some current things that are happening in our community. Uh, a little market update and a little bit of a game plan for 2023. And if I have time, I'm not sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor went over a little bit. He, I, have a, I have a few less slides than he did, I promise. Uh, and then selfishly get to plug Edwardsville neighbors a little bit. So let's talk inflation. I mean, again, I've been doing this 18 years talking to clients about inflation and, and how, that's, how we need to plan for that. But it's always been something that's just gradually happening throughout the years. We've never truly, well, in my career here and in my lifetime, I thought this was a, a laser, but it's not. So here we are today, going back, we look back in the 80s, in the 70s and the 80s, we saw that inflation really spike up. I mean, I was born in 1979, so this is truly my first time actually really feeling inflation. I mean, raise your hand if, if, if back in the day you, you remember inflation and you felt inflation. Raise your hand high. I didn't say raise your hand if you're older than 55, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I, so we've been very blessed over the last several years to live in this lower inflationary period. And obviously we had a, quite a spike over last year and we'll dive in a little bit deeper. This breaks it down, and I apologize if you can't see these exactly, but we look at where we got the major inflation numbers uh, throughout last year, and it peaked in, in June at 9.1. The green on top is energy. We all felt that, right? The power bill doubled overnight, it seemed like. The red was the increased cost in new and used vehicles. I mean, did anybody buy a car last year? What a crazy experience. Right? My wife and I were looking for a new car. We call the dealership. We say, hey, we'd love to get a new car. Here's the model. He said, great, I'll, I'll, get, I'll call you when we get one in. Three months later, hey, I got one. Can we, can we get a $1,000 deposit? You can come, come get it. And we're like, sure, what color is it? Uh, I don't know. Do you want it? <laughs> we're like, yes. It was the weirdest thing that ever happened in buying a car. But... Um, Fortunately, you can see that is coming back to reality. 
The things down at the bottom, though, they're a little bit scary. We see uh, housing and just the cost of goods and, and services and restaurants, hotel, transportation. The section on the right over here looks at professional forecaster and consumer expectations. Uh, over the last 10 years for inflation, we've averaged in that low to mid-low two number for inflation. Luckily here, obviously it's, it's spiked, but professional forecasters are forecasting in the next five years that that should come back down and they're, gonna, and they're trying to get it back to that two to three range. They're forecasting at about 2.9%. So while we're still gonna feel inflation over the next several years, obviously they're working hard to bring that back down to, to normal. Now let's talk a little interest rates. Of course, we've seen a, a drastic change in that. That's the number one thing that the Fed is trying to do to curb inflation is, ri is, is to raise interest rates. They're trying to slow the economy down, which really kind of stinks, but unfortunately they have to do it. As James mentioned, you know, the last two decades or so, we've been living in the kind of the dream world from an interest rate environment perspective. And we, went, we jumped drastically here in 2022. It's kind of crazy. The Fed came out at the end of 21 and said, I, th I think we're going to raise interest rates probably 75 basis points in 2022. Um, they failed to mention that they were going to do that four times, not just throughout the whole year. So it was a little bit, little bit hard on everybody. They've already come out and said that they're going to raise rates probably two more times, at least this year. But at least from their project projections, you can see we hope to see it peak here this year and then slowly start to come back down to a more manageable, uh, more manageable place for everybody. Another way to look at it, this is the 10-year Treasury yield curve. And, and also, the, that that's, represents the blue line. The gray represents your, after, your, your nominal rate of return, basically, after you factor in inflation. So this is the scary part. Right now, they've raised rates, the 10-year you know, Treasury at the end of uh, January was at 3.5%. But after you factor in inflation, you know, you're actually losing buying power. It's making it difficult. It's creating a tough environment for all of us. Again, they're doing their best to try to, to fix this and get us back in the, in, the, in the right spot. So how is all it So we're talking about inflation, rising interest rates, but how is that affecting us here, right? Especially from a community, community development standpoint, it's definitely created some challenges. I reached out to a, a friend of mine, Mr. Michael, Michael Bailey. He gave me some thoughts as obviously he's doing a lot of community development. And he said there's some of the major challenges is one, it slowed the market down drastically. Of course, from all the slides from Mr. Mayor, holy cow, we had so much development last year, it's insane. It's also ca caused some issues with just the cost of borrowing money. Obviously, interest rates go up. It's harder to borrow money or it's, the profit margins are not nearly the same. And they're also requiring more equity to get into these projects. He did say, hey, there are some positives, though. We always got to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. Materials are finally starting to come back in line and come back to a normal price. He said that is huge. Lenders are adjusting their spreads and really helping them. I mean, are there any, any bankers in here? Maybe. <laughs> uh, and he also said, hey, you know, sometimes rapid growth causes a little too much competition. And it's pushed some folks out of the market, which at the end of the day is is tends to be good for everyone. And how is it affecting our small businesses? This is where it's tough. Consulted with my good buddy SJ. We had a little powwow on this. Obviously, we have some major, ch the number one challenge we have is just a shortage of workers. There just aren't enough people that are here and able to, to man these local small businesses. And it's been tough to retain the quality folks. And of course, with increased expenses on everything, that cost then is going to be passed on to the consumer, which makes it tough. And the number one thing that's, that's hurting these small businesses is now they're working more, they're making less, there's more stress, it's causing burnout. Okay, now the positives, right? Sorry, doom and gloom. <laughs> positives, 
We also have a huge demand for products and services in our community. I mean, think about it. If you went out, to, if you started a business today, you're going to hope for people are coming in the door, that people want your products and services. And luckily, in our community, we have that. Over COVID and all of last year, you know, last two years has been very, two, three years have been very tough on, on these small businesses. But I love this community so much. I feel like people have revolutionized the way they do business. They have found ways to, to be better at marketing. They have gotten creative with their employees. They've tweaked their hours. They found new ways to improve what they were doing. And this is the biggest thing that I think Edwardsville has for it, is the strength of our community. We all know each other. We love each other. We care about the good in all of our local businesses, right? So we walk into a, a restaurant, and maybe they're a little slow or because of short staff. Or maybe they had to increase the price a little bit, right? I feel like we do a great job at being patient and, and loving on those folks. And maybe some, of the, maybe some of the small businesses don't feel that way. But I'm, I'm going to challenge all of you to think that way. If you're having any issues, let's take care of the people that take care of us in our community. All right, so jumping into the market a little bit, and, and um, so what do we do in this environment, right? What do we do when the economy is acting different than normal? What do we do when there's things that are out of our control? The first thing I do, consult with my team, right? Who is on your team? What a better time than when there's some disruption in the markets to consult with your, with your team. Reach out to your insurance folks and have them review stuff. Talk to your attorney. Right? Meet with your banker. Review all your, your debt. Uh, obviously, meet with your accountant. Think about different tax strategies. Again, lean on the folks that are professional in your circle. From a market perspective, what are things that you should be thinking about doing? A lot of times when there's so much, so much craziness going on in the market, everybody thinks we need to make some changes. We need to do something different. This slide, I apologize, it's small, there's a lot of info on here, but basically what this slide looks at, it goes year by year going back to 2008, and it looks at different asset class returns, from real estate to large cap investing to fixed income. And at the end of the day, the number one key is remain diversified in what you're doing, in your portfolio, whatever it might be, right? This white the, the line going through there and the white boxes represent a diversified portfolio. So you're not chasing the highs, you're not chasing the lows. It's, it's trying to remain a, a sophisticated, just keeping the heads, your head straight. Because if we go chase returns, you look in 2021, the best performing asset class was real estate. In 2022, it was the worst performing asset class. And that's what happens typically with investors. We chase some of these returns. So remain diversified. Two, this looks at S&P 500 returns going back to what year? 1980. The gray boxes represent the returns from the S&P 500. And what I love about this chart is 32 of the 43 years, the S&P 500 is positive. So that also brings me to my second point. Stay in the game. Remain committed to your long-term goals. Right? We don't know what the S&P 500 is going to return next year or the following year. Right? Try not to time the market. The other thing this slide shows, which I love, is those little red dots at the bottom represent the intra-year decline that happened throughout that, throughout that particular year. So we all remember 2020. Even though the S&P finished up 16% in, er, in, in 2020, it also fell 34% off of a high at one point. So if you are trying to time the market and get in or get out, you ultimately could have missed out on, on, a, on still a very positive year. There. Oh, sorry, back up one. And then lastly, this, is, I, this slide I think gives us all a little bit of optimism, right? We're all doom and gloom right now. Things, are, things have been rocky, I, I, except January was a, a nice start to the year from a market perspective. This particular slide looks at consumer sentiment. So if we, if we pulled the room right now and we said, how do you feel about the market and what's going on? Obviously, the, 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 tall, or the high part is everybody's feeling good. If you look at the bottom, that's when we're feeling bad. So 
as of the end of last year, we were at one of the lowest points. So everybody's feeling terrible about the market. And I, what I love about this chart is, if you look at, there's been like eight major troughs where it hit a low point. The average rate of return the following year for the S&P 500 was 25%. So I'm not saying, you know, Josh isn't, Josh isn't guaranteeing 25% return next year, but this gives us some confidence that potentially good things could be coming. All right, switching gears just a little bit. How am I doing on time? All right. Uh, switching gears a little bit, just thinking phil uh, philanthropically here. This particular chart looks at the S&P 500 is the gray, and the orange, it, the orange line represents charitable giving in the United States. So the reason I bring this up is there's a pretty similar correlation between the S&P 500 and how charitable the folks in the United States are. So I'm anxious to see what that chart looks like in the next year or two after what we just went through in 2022. So that's just a, a challenge to all of you. And that's why I love this community so much. We are so giving. We are so philanthropic. Um, so it's just a, let's just continue doing what we're doing and being good stewards and helping take care of our community. I got two uh, kind of tax ideas from a, from a philanthropic standpoint. One Instead of giving cash to a uh, particular nonprofit, one idea was if you have uh, some appreciated stock or a non-cash asset, you could potentially think about giving that to a charity. So for example, let's say Matt Holmes sitting right here, my buddy, he was sitting on some Apple stock that he bought a long time ago and it's, it's made, a, made a ton for him. Instead of saying, I'm gonna sell the stock, this for an example, I'm going to sell my $50,000 stock. I'm going to pay the tax. It's going to pay $6,750 of tax. He's going to end up giving the Main Street Community Center $43,250. Okay, that would be one thing that he could do. But instead, what we'd recommend is he actually give that Apple stock directly to Main Street Community Center. He receives the full charitable deduction. He doesn't pay any of the capital gain tax. And it ultimately ends up being more money directly to the charity that they get to keep, and he gets a heftier tax benefit. So it's a win-win for both, both folks. So if you're sitting on some appreciated assets and you want to be philanthropic, that's a great idea. Second tax strategy is something called bunching. It's uh, basically when you look at kind of loading up and comboing your charitable giving in one year, versus over a, a span of several years. So, for example, let's say uh, Sam, another buddy of mine sitting right here. Sam, Sam and his wife, let's say they give $10,000 every year to a couple charities, and they receive their normal uh, deductions, and they end up taking the standard deduction from a tax perspective. So over a two-year period, they receive $49,900 of, of tax benefit. But another strategy would be Instead of doing 10,000 this year and 10,000 next year, we'll bunch that together and do that 10,000 twice, basically in the same year. So now you're ultimately you're still giving 20,000 uh, over those two over those years. But if you do it in one year, you bunch that, and you end up getting a better tax deduction of an additional 8,200 dollars in tax deductions. So. Talk to your CPA more about those ideas. They'd love to help you and, and uh, find ways to be more creative there. Perfect little segue. James asked me to just give an update on Edwardsville Neighbors, and it's not for, not for donations to us. But uh, So Edwardsville Neighbors, we are a local nonprofit. We, uh, are, we've been around for 13 years. Our mission is to help individuals or families living within District 7 that are going through a medical or an emergency crisis. I say we, my wife and I, uh, created the charity. We have some board members here, and, we, and, and many, many of you have supported us either at our events or through our business uh, partnerships. But we have really four main ways that we generate revenue that we ultimately give back to our community. One down here is the Turkey Trot. It's a 5K 
on Thanksgiving morning. See a lot of familiar faces that have run in that. We appreciate that. We've started a golf scramble, and that's been a ton of fun. As Mayor uh, Risby had mentioned earlier, we started Edwardsville, or Neighbors Bake Shop, a local nonprofit down here in the Whispering Heights building. So please come in, grab, grab your cupcake, your, your pie, your donuts. Uh, we appreciate that. And last but, la last but not least, the Taste of Edwardsville is coming back. May 20th, mark your calendar here. We will be hosting that at the Ink House this year. We are super excited. Um, tickets officially go on sale one month prior, April 20th. They sell out typically in about two or three minutes. So mark your calendar. But if you wanted to guarantee yourself the ability to, to get a ticket, th consider being a, a, a business partner with us. You have opportunities for sponsorships through, for all those events, but it also can guarantee you some tickets to the event. And uh, I'm super proud to say that our organization has been over, over the last decade to, to give back about $1.2 million and help hundreds of families uh, in our community. So that's all I have. Thank you. So questions for me? Sweet. I'm out. No, I'm just <laughs> no I, I really appreciate you guys uh, being here this morning and listening to me ramble. Uh, this is fantastic. I was blown away by all the growth. I mean, you see it happening, right? But just then to, for him to, for, for the mayor to put it on, the, on all the slides to see all that, it's unbelievable. And it's all due to the great work in this, in this room here. I'd like to, after Chad's presentation, I'd like to offer one more round of applause for Chad. It is now time to invite the director of the Edwardsville CEO program, Hannah Allison, and two of her CEO students to the lectern to share a special message. Good morning, everyone. I'd first just like to thank everyone, the whole team at City of Edwardsville for allowing us a few minutes of your time. Um, we were super excited to receive an invitation to come again this year. Um, I'm lucky enough, this is my fifth year with Edwardsville CEO, and we're welcoming our sixth class of students this fall. So this fall, we're welcoming another big class of 26, which we're super excited about. That will be over 115 students that have gone through the program over the last um, five years that have been positively impacted by each of you sitting in this room, our community. So when I told our awesome crew of 26 that we were invited to this lovely breakfast, we thought, what a better place to share a few words of appreciation for what you've given to us. So I'd like to welcome Miss Caroline Marcus and Miss Ella Feldman to share that appreciation. Hi everyone, like Hannah said, I'm Caroline Marcus. My name's Ella Feldman. And we're here with 24 other high school seniors from Edwardsville High School, Father McGivney Catholic High School, and Metro East Lutheran High School on behalf of the CEO program. As a part of this program, sorry guys, I'm really short. <laughs> As a part of this program, we get the unique opportunity to learn from the amazing people in this room and all over our community about business experiences, life experiences, and entrepreneurship. Because of this, the community has become our classroom, and we get so many once-in-a-lifetime experiences that you can't find anywhere else. This year, we've had the opportunity to see the behind the scenes of many successful businesses here in Edwardsville, such as Peel, Chef Shop, Goshen Coffee, and many more. Along the way, we have learned from so many business professionals about life lessons, business knowledge and tips, and success. This spring, we're all launching our own individual businesses, and these lessons and speeches have been key parts in helping us form the foundations of our very own businesses. On behalf of all the students and Edwardsville CEO, past, present, and future, we thank you. Your time, talents, resources, and generous donations have truly changed our lives for the better. It is hard to explain just how much we've been able to learn, grow, and experience through this program and how much it has helped us to enter the professional world. 
If you'd like to learn more about our program, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. We all have our lanyards on, we're scattered about the room, and we would love to answer any of your questions. Thank you again. Thank you, Hannah. That is such a wonderful experience that you lead in this community. I will now welcome Mayor Rizvi back to the microphone. Thank you, James. Thank you, Chad. So now we have a few awards to hand out today. We have the 2022 Large Business of the Year Award, the 2022 Small Business of the Year Award, and the Nonprofit Business of the Year Award. The 2022 Large Business of the Year Award goes to R.P. Lumber. <laughs> R.P. Lumber Company, a full service retail home center and building materials supplier, was founded in 1977 by Mr. Bob Plummer in Staunton, Illinois. We are grateful this company has been a mainstay in Edwardsville for many years and that he and his wife Donna call the city of Edwardsville home. This company's commitment to high quality service and merchandise is commendable with many of you living in homes and or working in buildings with products supplied by the RP Lumber Company. I would like to thank Mr. Bob Plummer, his wife Donna, and children Jason, Julie, and Jennifer and all of the dedicated and hardworking employees at RP Lumber Company for providing consistent and dependable products and services to the residents of our city. Mr. Bob Plummer and RP Lumber not only are committed to our community, but also numerous other surrounding communities, communities that RP Lumber calls home. Please join me once again in congratulating owner of RP Lumber Mr. Bob Plummer for the Large Business of the Year Award. Well, I wasn't prepared that much to um, speak, but when I came, um, our thought that might be a good idea, a couple things. So let me take a second of your time. Boy, I, you know, the economic uh, uh, discussion was really great, did a great job on that, Chad, and everybody else. But boy, you know, um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm gonna tell you, and there's a lot of good questions there, but I'm old, but you know, you live through a lot of things, and you know, I can remember we started that first lumber yard in uh, 77. And boy, I remember when prime rate was 22. The highest I ever borrowed money was that was 17 and a half percent. I think about that 17 and a half percent. And I thanked the banker when I left. If you were very, very, very thankful because it could have been 22, it could have been 24. It's just, it's just amazing what some of that is. But anyhow, you know, I, I took, I wrote a couple notes down real quick. But you know, we, we grew and we've been really fortunate. My family's here and my son is, uh, boy, he's got a great job. He's in Springfield, Illinois, fighting a fight at the state capitol right now. But, uh, so he couldn't make that. But you know, when you, when you talk about the um, uh, small business, we were really blessed. Um, we've we've uh, been fortunate with great employees to grow to between Home and Harvest and RP Lumber. And RP Lumber is, is a driver. We're in seven states and over 100 stores, so we've been really, really blessed considering we started with, with one. But, um, you know, I'm just going to say that uh, we appreciate being part of this, this uh, community. Great people. We have a lot of good things that sometimes we overlook, I think, being um, in the um, shadows of St. Louis and all the amenities that come with a large city is great for most communities. A lot of communities, of course, don't have that. 
wherever they are, whatever those big cities are, Indianapolis, Kansas City, even Chicago, the amenities that come with it. Being with a, a great institution like SIU, a Division I college right here, that brings a lot of things. Being surrounded by three or four major interstates, there's a lot of things that drive economy. It takes hard work and it takes people. And, uh, you know, um, every night I, I uh, thank God. that he did a lot of good things for us. And, and then, and I'm a believer. And then we thank our customers. It takes customers and it takes people, but it takes customers to come in that door, as we all know. And it takes vendors and suppliers. Boy, we've been through some tough times when you couldn't get product, when you did get product. It was um, tremendously expensive, hard to get, everything that went with it. Thank the bankers. It takes, it takes assets and it takes borrowing power and it just takes a lot of things, but, but um, it, it just, it's a whole mixture and it definitely takes employees. It takes tremendous employees. We all have good employees. We all have a good city to live in. We all have a lot of things going our way, but boy, it takes employees. And don't ever forget that. And, um, and that's about all I have, but we appreciate everything that the community does for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, we have the 2022 Small Business of the Year Award goes to the Chef Shop. In January 2006, Nancy and Scott Schneider purchased the Chef Shop and with the help of their employees, families, and friends, moved in 2009 to their current location, adding homemade, homemade fudge that same year. In 2012, they expanded their retail space with the addition of 70 flavors of popcorn. The Chef Shop, a gourmet kitchen store, offers thousands of kitchen items including cookware, bakeware, cutlery, grilling, and more along with 160 bulk candy dispensers and 53 different types of bottled soda. Each November, the Chef Shop hosts a charity knife sharpening event with donations going to local organizations. Dinged, dented, and slightly used is another charitable event they host with 100% of the proceeds from items they store throughout the year that are just not quite perfect and then they sell at the event for local charities. Additionally, additionally for over 10 years, they donate 12 pans of fudge uh, containing 24 pieces to the EHS band boosters to sell at their craft fair, bringing in well over $1,100 in profit. Please join me in congratulating owners of the Chef Shop, Nancy and Scott Schneider, for the Small Business of the Year Award. I guess I'll let him hold it and I'll talk. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> He's, when we go shopping, he says the only reason I bring him is so he can be the pack horse. So here we go. So, <laughs> um, so thank you very much for this award. It's very, it's very much an honor. Um, the chef shop is very proud to serve the community. Um, we have, uh, Scott and I have completed our 17 years uh, with the chef shop starting in 06, January of 06. And um, things have changed a lot. We were, you know, the 1,200 square foot little cute little boutique store, which we have turned into sort of a monster on the other end of the plaza, um, and kind of got our our, uh, our our progression down there. The shop was originally started by Vicky Primrose, Vicky and Joe Primrose, and Vicky 
uh, got the shop through the hard years, the first eight and a half years. You know, most small businesses fail long before then. So she did the, the tough part there. And the chef shop came to be because of cookie cutters. I don't know if any of you know that story or not, but uh, Vicki had owned a chef shop, uh, well, it had a different name, but it was a kitchen store in Wyoming. And um, the, when they moved back, moved here, Joe moved back here, he was local. Um, she went to uh, make cookies with her little neighbor girl, and they couldn't find cookie cutters. Her cookie cutters had been lost in the move, and so she went out to buy cookie cutters in Edwardsville, and not a single store in Edwardsville had cookie cutters. So she decided that Edwardsville needed a kitchen store, so she started the, the chef shop. And um, like I said, for eight and a half years, and then Scott and I have moved it from the 1,200 square foot store down to 4,000 and then added the 2,500, so we're 6,500 square foot now. And we employ 30 people, um, some about a third of which are full-time and the rest of them are part-time. So we, we joke around that we have like two demographics. We have college students <laughs> who that you know you're gonna lose every about two or three years. You know, you, they, they, they cycle through. And then uh, we have a lot of retired people who come to work for us after they've retired and they wanna do something fun. So those are great people to have uh, backing up your business. Um, we had a lot of challenges during COVID. Oh, I want to tell what my our highest interest rate has. You're talking about interest rate, because <laughs> <laughs> because we uh, we bought the store in '06 and '08. There was a banking crisis, and uh, the feds seized several banks. And the bank that we had the most money borrowed from that was seized, and we paid 34.9 percent interest. It was yeah, it was seized by the. Uh FDIC. By the FDA, and when they did that, uh, the feds raised the rate. They, they raised our rate to 34.9. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and we're still here. <laughs> of course, we dedicated paying that off as quickly as we could. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a that's a crazy thing there. So, um, but uh, you know, during COVID, we had a lot of challenges, as all all businesses did. Um, we had uh, problems getting product in. And we uh, got to the point where you had to take it when you could get it, and you had to, we, we, we started ordering in, normally we start ordering for the holidays and like, you know, stockpiling for the holidays in October. Well, in 20, we started in like June, ordering in and taking as much as we could possibly get and getting ready for the holidays because you might order it this month and not get it and then the next month you could get it, so you just had to figure out what you could get when in order to get ready. The following year was even worse. 21 was much worse with, as far as getting product in, and uh, we started ordering for the holidays stockpiling in April, which the significance of that is that we have to pay for it within 30 days of when we get it. So that means we started stockpiling in April, paying for it in May and not being able to sell it until November and December. So you can imagine the cash flow issues that that creates for a small business. But we uh, have the great support of the, com of the Edwardsville community. Uh, we have people who come to the chef shop from, they drive more than an hour to get to the chef shop. A lot of our customers do. So we're very thankful for that. And I brag all the time because I'm a member of several organizations so I know retailers throughout the United States. And I'm always bragging about Edwardsville community and how the Edwardsville community supports local businesses. It's, it's not that way everywhere, I can tell you. I hear this from all of my friends who own businesses, how fortunate we are that the Edwardsville community supports local business. So we would like to thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have the 2022 Nonprofit Business of the Year goes to Edwardsville Neighbors. <laughs> Edwardsville Neighbors was established as a certified charitable organization in 2010 after Chad and Kathy Opal, with the help of their family, successfully organized the first annual Taste of Edwardsville in 2009 with the fundraiser benefiting the Greg Siebert Foundation. 
Edwardsville Neighbors has helped over 100 families since their inception. They work conscientiously to promote their services in the community by actively seeking and accepting nominations for families facing medical hardship within District 7. The Board of Directors oversees all fundraising events, communality efforts, and awards of assistance. Please join me in congratulating Chad and Kathy Opel, co-founders of Edwardsville's Neighbors, for the Nonprofit Business of the Year Award. I guess you've all heard Chad talk a little more than we need to today. So um, I'm the band holder too. I just want to say thank you. We, we've had such a blast doing this, and we've met so many incredible people. We have a wonderful board of directors, um, so it's really, they share in this award. It's not just the two of us. Um, they work tirelessly to have events um, and also to help families. So I just want to use this quick little minute that I have to plug um, our nomination process. If you know of any families or individuals who live within District 7 who may be having a medical or emergency crisis that could use our help, um, please log on to our website um, or call one of us and let us know about them. We can keep the nomination anonymous. We have a lot of people who will say, you know, hey, I think my child's teacher is going through this, but I don't want them to know that I thought they might need help. So we can certainly keep any of that anonymous, um, and we would love to um, help anybody that you know that could use our assistance. So thank you, and thank you to the mayor and to this wonderful community. We appreciate it. Thank you. We would like you to get connected with our city. If you are interested in subscribing to the city's business e-newsletter and any other newsletters, please scan the QR code to get connected or see one of us afterwards. We'll be glad to sign you up. Our Parks and Recreation Department has unique sponsorship opportunities throughout the city. Please talk, talk with Nate Tingley, our Parks Director, or scan the QR code above. Nate is right over there. Nate, if you could raise your hand. I'm also delighted to announce an Edwardsville Small Business Social hosted by Human to Human on April 13th from 5 to 7 at Work Co Plus. If you would like more information, please reach out to Anya Covington or scan the QR code. Anya is right there. Thank you for attending. Before we close, afterwards, anyone who won an award, if you have time, we would very much appreciate an opportunity to get a photo of you with the award if you have time afterwards. So please take the time if you can. And I would like to thank Crystal Garden and Banquet Center for catering to the elected officials, city staff, and business representatives for attending this year's breakfast. I would like to recognize James Arnold, Desiree Gerber, Devin Gray, John Cunningham, Kathy Hensley, Catherine Keck, and Grace Pelock for all of the effort and time that went into making this breakfast what it is today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to welcome James Arnold back up to the lectern. Thank you. I forgot to write this part down. So with that said, I also want to thank you all for coming today and sharing this special moment with us. Um, two hours is a long ask, and we understand that, but we do appreciate everybody that showed up and hearing the message that we wanted to share today. If you do have time, you know, please scan this barcode. I think last year we asked for kind of your opinions and thoughts of our business forecast breakfast. Um, and I think we got four responses, and I think one of the responses, if not all four of the responses, were the same person from my office. <laughs> So please take that opportunity. You get to have a voice and say what went right, what went okay, and, and, and your thoughts for the future on this. Um, but without saying too much more, thank you all for coming today, and this concludes our breakfast.